Salute, man. God bless everybody tuning in today. Praise God. And right now we we going to study on the book of Genesis. Praise God cuz a lot of people try to discredit the word of God and they try to say uh Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 um solidifies a trinity that's what they say and that's one of the biggest lies from the enemy so we want to let the word of god speak we want to let only his word speak because in his word there's everything his word is true because he is the word that was made flesh and that flesh hallelujah was was the body of god jesus christ and he dwelt amongst us and he left us examples on how to live a holy life so we're going to go into the word today and break down Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And we're going to speak on Elohim, praise God, which is God Almighty, right? Hallelujah. In him there is life, power, hallelujah, freedom, change breaking that name. Praise God. So, so before we start, we want to open up with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, eternal Father up in heaven, Lord God, we give you all the praise, all the glory right now, Lord God. We pray that your word goes forth today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We pray that the seed that goes forth, hallelujah, that it fall on fertile ground, that it produces good fruit in somebody's life, Lord God. Hallelujah. May the scales fall off their eyes, those that can't see, Lord God. Hallelujah. I pray that you give them spiritual eyes and see this truth, Lord God, that you give them a spiritual ear to hear your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Because your words are all spirit. Praise God, and, and, and no man can, can teach your word, Lord God. It is your spirit. We can't go to school for no seminary or classes or, or no man-made theology, Lord God. It is only your spirit, Lord God, that teaches us, Lord God. So I pray, hallelujah, that you, get every, that you give everybody a spiritual understanding of what you are trying to say today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we praise your holy name, and we thank you for your truth, Lord God. Let your truth be revealed unto those, hallelujah, that are lost, that are blind, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we praise your holy name, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So right now, hallelujah, we're in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And we're going to go to verse 26. And we're going to read out of there. Praise the Lord. Because a lot of people try to discredit the word of God. And they, they, they like to say that. That this is two gods creating man. They, they like to say that Jesus Christ and the Father were standing next to each other. And that they was creating man, right? They like to say that, that it was this whole triune thing going on. That there was another God floating around while Jesus Christ and God said, let us make man in our own image, right? But we're going we gonna to break this down today. We're going to read, hallelujah. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the things and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God made man in his own image image hallelujah so if god made man with a second god meaning a plurality of divine persons then genesis chapter 1 verse 27 will read and it would say and they made man in their own image but no it says god created man in his own image so how can they say two gods created man Scripture, man, scriptures will never lie, man. Praise God. Scripture will always interpret scripture. The scripture says, let us make man in our own image, only one. So when we go to the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 10, we can understand, hallelujah, that only one God created us. Have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? How many created us? It says one. How many is one? One means one. One don't mean two. It don't mean three. One means one. Scripture must always interpret scripture. Line upon line. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Everything must line up, man. This is how we know. Hallelujah. Because scripture will always interpret scripture. Scripture will never 
contradict itself whatsoever the word of god is flawless so it can't be two it can't be three because scripture says there is one what is one one means one but trinitarians will read genesis 126 and they will say this is the second person of a trinity but that's a contradiction of the word because all throughout the word of god it says there is only one god he says there is no god with me there is no god beside me so in genesis 126 is there a lord sent beside another lord hallelujah it's impossible man so when we let's turn to the book of isaiah chapter 45 verse 5 and we're going to read out of there and we're going to see how many gods there is praise god the book of isaiah praise god isaiah 45 okay praise god isaiah 45 verse 5 i am the lord and there is none else there is no god beside me amen so now we see that there is only one god and he said that there is none else he said there is no god beside him praise god and we're going to confirm this word with deuteronomy 32 39 praise god because scripture will always interpret scripture it will never contradict itself whatsoever a lot of people fight this word a lot of people think that because we say there is not no two or three gods, they try to say that we come against, that we try to discredit the sun. No, we're not saying that there wasn't no son of God, but we're trying to just show you this truth that the son of God was flesh and blood because you, you must ask yourself, what was the son? Son was creation. The spirit, hallelujah, which is the father eternally in heaven. He is the creator, the creator that created the creation. Not when the son of God was born, hallelujah, that spirit, hallelujah, got in that body. Look at how deep this is. The word of God says that, man, God can't be contained whatsoever, right? The word of God says he's high as heaven, deeper than hell, longer and broader than the earth and the sea. So God is everywhere. If we, if we was able to see him, we'd be blind. If he was like fog, we'd be blind. So he is everywhere. The heavens are, can't contain, can't be contained. But look at how deep this is, man. Look at how deep this is. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's deep. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily was in that body. So that flesh and blood was a veil draped over the spirit. But people can't understand this. For some reason, it, they can't comprehend this. Because, see, God can manifest himself right here, bro, wherever we at. He can manifest himself wherever you at. He can manifest himself ten, in 10 different places all at the same time. And he can speak to all them 10 different people at the same time. Why? Because he is God. But is there 10 gods? No, there is only one. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. Ain't nothing impossible for him. Praise God. So when we can understand that that flesh and blood, uh, the, the, that son of God was flesh and blood, we could understand that, that, that God, the spirit, the fullness dwelt in him as written in the scripts. We ain't saying nothing else. We know who the son of God was. Hallelujah. We thank God for that son of God because that was a lamb of God. Glory to the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Praise God. So we're going to show you right here through scriptures that there is only one god and that genesis 126 was only one god that it was no trinity that trinity came from catholicism they came to that devil is a father of lies for he came to steal kill and destroy praise god so when we read in the book of deuteronomy 32 39 we see that he says right here he says see now that i even I am he, and there is no God with me. You heard that? He said, I am he. He said, I am he, and there is no God with me. And all throughout the scriptures, he says that he is one. Hallelujah. He is not second. He is not third. He said, beside him, there is no God. Man, but Trinitarians are real good at ignoring certain verses. Like, they read Genesis 126, but they ignore verse 27. Where it says, and God created man in his own image. See, if God created man as a plurality of divine persons, then it will read day. 
You see what I'm saying? It would say they created man in their image, but they like to twist the scriptures. They only like to stick to certain ones. Hallelujah. But we can use the entire word of God to tear down all the Trinitarian lies. They'll even try to say that the word of God, when it says one God, they'll say, yeah, he's one God. But they'll say he's three persons and one God. Man, that's crazy. What do you mean three persons and one God, man? Or three personalities. We don't serve no schizophrenic God. They'll say that God is plural. They'll say, uh, they'll use Elohim, hallelujah, which is a, the Hebrew word for God, hallelujah. But what they fail to realize is that the name Elohim can be used both ways. It can be used singular. Or in a plural way, hallelujah, but you could always determine how it's being used by the entire context. And I'm going to prove that through the scripture, hallelujah. Like I always say, it's not my words, but it's his word. Let every man be alive, but let his word always be true. Praise God. When you read the Holy Scriptures, if you know anything about Hebrew, hallelujah, you always see that Elohim is paired up with a singular verb. He says, I am. He don't say we am. He says, I am singular. Elohim is never being used in a plural form whatsoever. Praise God. It is singular. He is one. But then they'll say that the Father counsel with the Son. Hallelujah. They have made two gods. Praise God. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. And let's read out of there. Hallelujah. So we're in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Y'all heard that? After the counsel of his own will. See, God had a purpose to make man and he did not counsel with no one but himself. For Isaiah chapter 40, verse 14, he said, with whom took he counsel? Praise God. And I want to ask you something. With whom took he counsel? See, scriptures never lie. They always interpret each other. He is God alone. He don't need a counsel with no one, man. He is God Almighty. So Elohim does not mean two gods. Elohim is always paired up with a singular verb. For example, God is love. Hallelujah. God is a spirit. Deuteronomy 6.4. God is one. Hallelujah. You see how Elohim is always paired up with a singular verb? If Elohim was a plurality of gods, it would read Elohim are. It wouldn't say Elohim is. It would say Elohim are. But it says Elohim is. Praise God. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 33. I want to read out of there right now. Praise God. Because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. So when we, look, when we look at the word goddess right here, and we look it up in the Strong's, you look it up in the Hebrew, it says goddess right here means Elohim. So... My question to the Trinitarian viewers, praise God, does that mean that she was a trinity? Does that mean that she was triune? Absolutely not. As we keep reading, it talks about Shamash, the God of the Moabites. And that's a lowercase God, praise God. But that lowercase God also means Elohim in the Hebrew. Praise God. So does that mean he is triune? Does that mean he is a trinity? No, man. So... Also, in, in the book of Exodus, praise God, let's turn there real quick. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Go to your strongs and read the Hebrew on this, man. You will see what the word God means here, man. See the word God right here? It also means Elohim. So do you think God made Moses a trinity? Absolutely not, man. What he gave Moses was power. But... Hallelujah. But what Trinitarians fail to realize is that Elohim has more than one meaning. It can be used singular or plural, depending on the context of the script. Praise God. Everything's in the scripture. You read the whole thing and you'll start to get the understanding for it. Hallelujah. For example, in the book of Exodus, it talks about the master that took his servant to the judges. And when you look at the word judges, the word judges means Elohim as well. Man, the people... You need to stop making God a trinity, man. God is one. He is singular. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is one mighty God, and, and there is nothing impossible for him. He could, like I said, he could be here. He could be wherever you at. He could be in different places all at the same time, talking to as many people as he wants. God is one, singular. 
But I'll tell you what, he could operate in a plurality of functions. But 1 Corinthians 12, 6 says that there are many diversities and operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. He can do what nobody could do. Why? Because he is God Almighty. He can be in heaven and earth all at the same time. Hallelujah. He said, no man has ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. He is God Almighty, man. He could hear all of us pray at the same time. Hallelujah. You can be way up in Africa. I could be way over here in the United States. You, your other brother could be in Mexico. He could hear us all at the same time and speak to us all at the same time. Why? Because he is God Almighty. Hallelujah. He can fill us all with the Holy Ghost at the same time. It could be thousands of us, but there's only one spirit. Hallelujah. Not a thousand of different spirits. It's one spirit. Hallelujah. That, 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 that filled us all up at the same time. He's high as heaven, deeper than hell, longer and broader than the earth and the sea. What can't he do? Nothing is impossible for God. The Lord fills all space. So when we go to Genesis 126 and God said, let us make man in our own image, who is our? I've heard many people give different opinions on this. I've heard people say that God is talking to his angels and they line it up with the book of uh, Job chapter 38 where it says that the morning stars sang in joy and all this and that. I've also heard people say that God's word was a seed and he was talking to the earth which represented a womb because the earth it, it, it produces life so they say that God his word went into the ground and we, we took on the image Hallelujah, because we came from the dust and we took on the image of earth and the image of God because we got a spirit. I've heard that. I've heard people say that it's the majestic plural. Hallelujah, which is also called the royal plural, where a person of, of royalty or of high rank refers to themselves as we instead of I. For example, I remember back in the days, uh, DJ Khaled used to say, oh, we the best, we the best. He was talking about himself. Or I've read about uh, Queen Victoria one time where it says uh, where she was speaking of herself in a majestic plural where, where they, they told a joke and she said, oh, we are not amused. She was speaking of herself. She was using the majestic plural right there. The royal, You see what I'm saying? The royal plural. But I don't know about all that. Let me share revelation that the Lord gave me through the scripts because I really felt like I needed to line everything up with the word of God because that's all I'm about is the word of God. I ain't trying to come up with my own thoughts or none of that. So I'm going to let his word speak. Praise the Lord. So when we go back to the book of Genesis 126 and we read and it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Okay. So we must ask ourselves, who is God and what is God? We go to John 4, 24, and we read, it says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. See what it says? It says, him, 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 him. What, is, what does him mean? Him means him. It means one. It don't mean two. It don't mean three. It's not a triune God. It means one. Him is him. It don't say they. It says him, praise God, one mighty God. So now ask yourself, who is God? Hallelujah. We go to the book of Psalms, chapter 100, verse 3. It says, know ye the Lord that he is God. Okay, so if the Lord is God, what is the name of the Lord? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3 says that no man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Meaning only the Holy Ghost can reveal this to you. And you'll realize that he is the only Lord, that he is one. God is not a triune God. Hallelujah. For the word of God doesn't say Holy Trinity. It says Holy One. Just like he revealed himself to Saul. Hallelujah. When Saul said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Hallelujah. So how many lords do we got? Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hallelujah. So there can't be a little God standing next to a big God. No, because then the word of God would actually contradict itself. No, man, it says one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The scripture will always interpret scripture. So when God said, let us make man in our own image, who was he talking about and what was he talking about? Man, this is deep, and it's going to take the Holy Ghost to reveal this to you, man. Hallelujah. You must be fully in the spirit 
understand his word. Hallelujah. You must truly be in the spirit. Hallelujah. Ask him to fill you up. You cannot be in the flesh. Hallelujah. You must really be in the spirit to understand this. Hallelujah. When he said, let us make man in our own image, he was seeing that body that he would inhabit in the future. You see what I'm saying? Once again, when he said, let us make man in our own image, he was seeing a body. He was seeing the body that he was going to inhabit. Praise God. So when Adam was made, he was made in the light figure of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Chapter 5, verse 14. I want to read out of there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. You heard that? who was the figure of him that was to come. See, he was creating what he was going to come in the future. He was creating that body that he was going to come in in the future. This is why the verse follows and reads, and it says, and God made man in his own image. This is deep, man. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 29. We're going to continue to let his word speak. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For whom he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. You see what that's saying? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I want to ask y'all son, how is he the firstborn? He is the firstborn because before he came, everyone was walking dead in sin. Hallelujah. But when Jesus Christ came, hallelujah, the son of the living God, he gave us life. So he was the firstborn. Someone asked, isn't he the offspring of David? What does that mean? What does this mean, man? He is the root and the offspring of David, man. Praise God. Let's go to Revelation 22, 16. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. But when the fullness of time has come, he got in the womb of Mary and he sprung up out of David. Praise God. Hallelujah. Only God can be the root and the offspring and still be God. He's the only one that can occupy multiple positions and still be one. Hallelujah. We could go to Isaiah 53. Hallelujah. I love the book of Isaiah, man. Book of Isaiah chapter, ver uh, chapter 53. We're going to start at verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Hallelujah. So in this verse... Who is the he and who is the him? The he was the flesh and blood, right? The man and the him is the spirit of God. So the him manifested in the he and it was him that walked amongst us. Hallelujah. God with us because the he was God manifest in the flesh. Creator and creation. Hallelujah. So how is the he the root of David? He created David and the genealogy of David. So he is the root. The creator of everything, man. Hallelujah. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So he is the root. But that root said, I got to spring up out of dry ground. So the root got into dry ground, which is the womb of Mary. Hallelujah. The womb of Mary had never been watered by the seed of man. Hallelujah. So he went into dry ground and he sprang up out of a dry ground. Hallelujah. This is how he is the firstborn from the dead. See, when God was created, man. Hallelujah. When he created man, he already had the blueprint of that body that he was going to have it. Praise God. He is the one true wise God. Hallelujah. He is perfect. He is flawless. So when God created man in his own image, he created man in the image of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ is he. But it was for an appointed time. Praise God. And this is what people have a hard time understanding. It was for an appointed time. That's why the word of God says that he was the lamb of God. Hallelujah. And that lamb of God 
was ordained from the foundation of the world. And you can line all of this up. It says the word that God, the Lamb of God was ordained from the foundation of the world. And that's how you can line up Genesis 126, 127. Hallelujah. With him being ordained from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. No, sorry. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who was verily foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. This is how he defeated the devil, man. He created a perfect body to shed some perfect blood, hallelujah, for an imperfect world, for an imperfect people. Hallelujah, because we've been failing ever since the world started, way from the beginning. We've been failing, man. The Lamb of God was a perfect sacrifice and was ordained from the foundation of the world. God already had this plan, hallelujah. See, the Son of God was born and he was God Almighty himself manifest in the flesh he was born of a virgin and he walked this earth and he died for our sins and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures and he gave us the instructions on, on how to do he gave us the great commission he showed us what to do praise god so when we pay attention we can see how everything lines up everything in the word of god lines up he told his disciples to go teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and holy ghost and when they went and baptized they did it in the name of jesus christ because they knew that he was a father in creation the son of redemption and the holy ghost and power those three titles belong to that one name that one god they followed his instructions and we see this all throughout the new testament so now that you understand that i want to turn your attention to the book of colossians chapter 2 we're going to read from verse 8 to 12 hallelujah and the word of God reads and it says, uh, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of, of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him through faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead man this is deep man praise God so right here we see how we put on the image of God because Galatians 3 27 says those who have been baptized into Christ put on Christ we put Adam in the grave hallelujah and we get risen from the dead and now we walk dead to the flesh and we operate in the spirit hallelujah and once we get filled with the Holy Ghost we are sealed praise God see the spirit the water and the blood agree in one and this is how God created man in his own image and when we fulfill the word of God in our lives we can walk hallelujah in the image of God hallelujah because those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God and he who the son sets free is free indeed praise God so I thank God for this revelation that he's given us on these last days and I thank God for those that got an ear to hear this word praise God because this word will always confirm itself through other scriptures hallelujah but these Trinitarian people don't lie to the whole world hallelujah making two and three gods hallelujah they don't lie to the whole world hallelujah saying that he is a trinity saying that he is a triune god hallelujah the apostle paul said if anybody preach any other gospel let them be a curse hallelujah and that's what i'm saying right now if anybody come against his word hallelujah that he he is god almighty that jesus christ the son of the living god was the father manifest in the flesh and they come against that man let them be a curse hallelujah because he is god almighty how can there be two and three spirits hallelujah ephesians chapter 4 verse four lets us know that there is one body one spirit for the son of god had a beginning the son of god had an end hallelujah galatians 4 and 4 says he was made hallelujah he was made of a woman made under the law hallelujah he said jesus christ himself said how about the things how be it the things concerning me have an end he said the things concerning me have an end he was talking about the flesh and blood hallelujah but he loved us so much that 
He got beat, whooped, mock stripped. They pressed the crown of thorns on his head. Hallelujah. They hung him on the cross and they denied who he was. For the word of God says if they knew he was the Lord of glory, they would have never crucified him. Hallelujah. But he, he conquered death. Hallelujah. He rose from the grave and he was seen of over 500 witnesses. Praise God. He conquered death. See that flesh and blood? Hallelujah. When he, when he rose from the grave, it was raised a glorified body. The word of God says it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Hallelujah. He was raised a glorified body. Praise God. So that image, hallelujah, that image is the image that we put on now, the image of Christ. We get baptized into Christ. And we put that image on, praise God, and we allow him to take residence in us. For the word of God says, great is the mystery of godliness. Hallelujah. God was manifest in the flesh. What's the mystery of godliness? Godliness, meaning holiness, sanctification. Hallelujah. Christ being formed in you. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. Hallelujah. Praise God, that flesh and blood, hallelujah, was the Lamb of God. We got to understand that, that that flesh was a veil draped over the spirit. Hebrews 10, 20 says, by a new living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh and that flesh inherited the name from the spirit of God. Hallelujah. For Isaiah 40, 13 says that the Lord shall come forth as a mighty man. And Hebrews 1, 4 says, being made so much better than the angels by inheritance, he obtained a more excellent name than they. Hallelujah. So that flesh inherited the name from the spirit. That's why he walked this earth and he said, I am. Come in my father's name. The first two words said, told me everything. He said, I am. Come in my father's name. Who is the I am? Hallelujah. He told Moses, I am that I am. Hallelujah. Moses said, who shall I say sent me? He asked God that question. And he said, I am that I am. So when he went, hallelujah, he knew, he knew that the great I am was God Almighty. So nowadays people professing Jesus Christ, and they saying that he's a second person in the Godhead. They don't even know who he is, man. And I tell them people, if, if he revealed himself to Moses, and he, re he revealed himself to the apostles and to certain individuals that's alive today, very few, very few, hallelujah, and we profess who he is, we, we know who he is, but you making him a second person, I want to ask y'all something, how could y'all say y'all been sent by God, and you don't even know who God is, how could you say you been sent by God, but you don't know who he is, man, he is the alpha, he is the omega, he is the first, he is the last, he is the beginning, and he is the end, he is the almighty God, Hallelujah. The almighty God, the one true spirit that moved upon the face of the waters and said, let there be light. And there was light. Hallelujah. For Jesus Christ was in the world and the world was made by him, but the world knew him not. For he stretched forth the heavens alone. He spread abroad the earth by himself. There is none other. Hallelujah. But him, the one true spirit. That's the message of today that he is one. God created man in his own image. That body he created, when he said, let us make man in our own image, he was talking about the body he was going to come in in the future. That body that he was going to inhabit was created way from the beginning. That's why it says the lamb that was foreordained from the foundation of the world. That's why he said, let us make man in our own image. He already had the blueprint that he was going to inhabit. It was all part of his plan. This is how he defeated that coward devil. Praise God. And that coward devil's time is running short. Because his time is up. Revelation 20, 10, going, it lets us know where he going. He going to the lake of fire, man. Praise God. He going to the lake of fire. See, this whole triune stuff has been going on for centuries. It's, 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 it's straight paganism. Paganism, idolatry. We got to flee from that. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Praise God. And I profess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is God Almighty. Hallelujah. And his spirit lives in me. And if anybody wants to fulfill the word of God in their life and go down in water according to Acts 2.38, 
baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, reach out. JesusChristStreetMinistry.com, man. God bless y'all. I pray that the seed, hallelujah, fell on fertile ground. I pray it produces good fruit in somebody's life. Many come against this word. Many, many, man, we're going to get persecuted for this, man. But praise be to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To him be all the glory, man. Salute.